<gasps> Nothing says perfect homemade dessert quite like dropping the pan on it at the last minute. Leche flan is a classic Filipino dessert known for its silky texture and has a sweetness that melts right in your mouth. It's one of my favorite treats from my childhood, and today I'm ready to learn how to make it. With the guidance from Chef Levon, here's my first attempt at creating this iconic dessert. First things first, I gotta melt the sugar for the caramel layer that will sit on top. I used to wonder how the golden layer was made, and it turns out it's just melted sugar. Simple, but it explains why it tastes so good. As tradition, it makes sense that I burnt the first attempt. But hey, better to make mistakes early on so I can restart and try again. Funny enough, on my second go with lecheflan, when I paired it with the ube cake, I ran into another roadblock. I waited just a bit too long to pour the melted sugar and it hardened on me, making it impossible to spread evenly. Safe to say that melting sugar has been tricky for me, but now I finally managed to create a caramel layer that came out perfectly smooth on attempt number two. Here goes nothing. I'll set the caramel aside to harden, and now it's time to dive into the main mixture. First up, separating the egg yolks, which is an essential base for that creamy texture. Next, I'm mixing them with sweetened condensed milk for richness and evaporated milk for that smooth consistency. And of course, I can't forget one of the star ingredients, a splash of vanilla extract. And finally, a sprinkle of salt to balance all that sweetness. With everything mixed together, it's time to strain this mixture. A key step that really makes a difference. Straining removes any egg solids, enhancing the creaminess and fine-tuning the consistency to perfection. This extra step ensures that every spoonful of leche flan is velvety smooth, with no interruptions in texture. In fact, I'm going to strain it a second time because if I'm doing this, I want every bite to melt in the mouth. What? That was sound good. With the mixture ready, I'll release any trapped bubbles. Once that's done, it's time to start baking it. But before popping it in the oven, I need to set up a water bath to make sure this flan bakes just right. The water bath keeps the temperature around the flan consistent, preventing the custard from heating too quickly or the caramel layer from drying out. I will let it bake for the next 60 minutes, giving me just enough time to clean up. <laughs> Are we ready? Oh, are you scared? A little bit. There's a lot of syrup involved. And I got a white shirt on. Okay. It's, there's something in there. Here we go. So I got a handle on both. It fell. <laughs> Here we go. <gasps> oh, no! <laughs> oh, man! This is so good! It's beautiful. Dude, it's so nice. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. I can't believe I did that. It came so good, too. As tragic as that pan drop was, I'm actually pretty satisfied with how this leche flan turned out. Luckily, the damage was minor, with just a little corner shaved off. But now, it's time to make it look more presentable. Maybe we should let it chill first. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Oh, man. Something I probably should have done after flipping is to let it chill for a bit so it could firm up before slicing. But even so, it looks just as smooth and creamy as I hoped. Overall, I'm really pleased with how this leche flan turned out, and I picked up some valuable lessons along the way. 
like managing the trickiness of melting sugar, double straining the mixture for that smooth texture, and letting the flan chill after baking. If I use a bread pan again, I might use a bit less sugar, since the narrow surface led to a bit of caramel overflow. But for a first attempt, I'd say this was successful. I did hear the caramel layer crack a few times. Once when I poured in the mixture, and again when I set it inside the water bath. But in the end, it all turned out fine. The caramel softened while baking, so it looks like there's no need to worry if it cracks along the way. Now that I know how it's made, I would definitely make this more often, since the steps were pretty straightforward and the ingredients were as simple as it gets. All I really need is a bit of downtime, since it does take a while to bake, and it turns out the secret to giving Lechiflan that true homemade feel is dropping a pan on it. <gasps> Tastes like smooth eggs. <laughs> but that is it. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, here at our virtual table, we make this a place to inspire and learn. If this video inspired you to make this, or if there's a certain way that you make this dish, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell to stay tuned for next week's video, where we continue to celebrate Filipino American History Month as Chef Levon makes chicken sisig from scratch. See you all in the next one.